Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warplanes and today we're going to take a look at uh, the F7F Hell or Tiger Cat, not Hellcat, the F7F Tiger Cat. Uh, it's a tier 7 American heavy fighter uh, and in my opinion I hear a lot of people uh, say a lot of bad things about this plane. So before we go into the review too far, uh, let me just say... Um, I'm going to try to get a video out uh, every week. I should be able to record at least one video on each Friday. Uh, and that's really the only day I would have available for me to get any recording done. So as long as I wake up early enough and have a, uh, a replay that I'm willing to show, then I will try to sit down and record a video. I do remember that I said I would try to get a 25,000 personal point game in the P82B, but that has not yet happened, uh, unfortunately. I have had a couple more 20k games, but nothing that's going to set the world on fire. So, I mean, really to get 25,000 personal point game, you really do have to have perfection, right? The battle has to be perfect. So anyway... The Tiger Cat. This is a plane that I feel, I hear a lot of people say pretty bad things. So, is it as bad as people say? Well, let's take a look. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop up some of the other uh, Tier 7 Heavy Fighters. Uh, so I guess I can pop up the TU-1. In any case, here we go. Okay, so from the way that I feel about this plane, uh, just by feels and before we're looking through the stats too much, I feel like it has pretty decent guns, and then the maneuverability is mediocre, the airspeed's mediocre, altitude performance is probably below average. That's my guess. Um, but let's take a look. So the F7F gets a total of four 20 mils and 450 cal machine guns. Actually, I did not realize it had machine guns as well, but apparently it gets 450 cals as well, so yeah, more firepower than I thought it had. Uh, the TU-1, of course, it's got a lot. Uh, the Hornet's got a... Oh, it's kind of low. Well, that's because it only has 420s, but if you're taking a look at this comparison, it's definitely on the higher end for firepower. Uh, really only behind the, well, it's, it's probably mid-tier, because it's, it's definitely above a couple of them, but it is lower than others. The thing about the F7F is consistency, right? F uh, 50 cals are great because they never overheat, so having that sustained firepower is really useful when you're attacking bombers or attacking high health targets, whereas the 20 mils just hit hard, and they're just... They have a little bit better range, and they're just a little bit more reliable, I would say, than 50 cals, because you have that, that extra range, and you do a little bit more damage. But they do overheat a little bit faster. Uh, you do have to keep that in mind. But generally speaking, the F7F is has really good firepower, that good blend of firepower uh, that you would appreciate. Whereas the XP-75... Yeah, it has 10 guns, but they are 50 cals, and so you're definitely limited by range. What does the VB-10 have? The VB-10... Oh, wow. Um, it technically has more guns than us, but it has the same firepower rating. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe the guns are a little bit worse or something? So I guess the firepower is pretty comparable to the VB-10, which is interesting. Uh, we have an optimal range on our 20s of 2,400, almost 2,500 feet. That's actually really, really good for 20s. Um, it's not like as long as derpy 30s or uh, derpy 40s or whatever, 45s. But it's not as bad as 50 cals either. You have that good mid-range, and that's why um, 20s are really good. And of course, the 50 cals are also decent. Uh, if we take a look at bombs and rockets, 
this actually blows the competition out of the water. If you're taking a look at this, there is no other tier seven heavy or yeah tier seven heavy fighter that comes anywhere close to the ordnance capabilities of the F7F. Uh, there's just no competition. The 109Z gets a single bomb. Oof. And it takes 120 seconds to reload that bomb. Uh, XP-75 gets two 500-pound bombs, which is good, but you're waiting on that reload, and that reload is ridiculous. VB-10 doesn't get any ordnance. Key-43 gets two 250-kilogram bombs, which are okay. Uh, T-1 doesn't get any ordnance, uh, but the Hornet is probably the other... Uh, heavy fighter that has the most competition uh, or gives this plane the most run for its money. Uh, they both have a 1,000 pound bomb, but and I think they both get rockets. Yep, they both get eight rockets. So technically, sp oh no, no, I take that back. Uh, the Hornet actually gets two 1,000 pound bombs. Uh, are they the same? Yes, okay. It does look like the 1,000 pound bombs are better, or not better, the, the exact same 1,000 pound bombs that you get on the F7F and Hornet. Uh, but the Hornet actually gets two bombs. Interesting. And then if we take a look, the reload time is better on the Hornet. Even with my buffs to the reload speed on the F7F, the Hornet still has a better reload on its two 1,000 pound bombs. So in my opinion, Hornet's a lot better when it comes to bombs. But the other comparison is these rockets. They do 1,000, 115. Oh. Okay, so that's where the difference is, right? The F7F gets less bombs, or it gets one less bomb, and the bomb reloads slower. But... The F7F does about 50% damage more than the Hornet per rocket and has the same amount of rockets. So overall, I'd say that the ordnance capability is quite comparable. Um, optimal distance, the F7F just straight up has the more superior rockets. But again, the reload on these rockets is significantly worse. I have a lot of buffs to the reload, and it's still 131 versus 120. So if you're going raw ordnance capability and raw ground damage, I would guess the Hornet is probably your better bet. Uh, and in my opinion, that's <clears throat> that makes sense. I really think the Hornet specialty really is those rockets. Um, that is where the Hornet, or not rockets, it, it's ground capabilities is very impressive on the Hornet. I don't know why the rating is so low. Perhaps it's just because I don't have it specialized, so I don't have like the reload buffs and the damage buffs and all this other stuff. It's very possible that's what's causing the difference. But like if you're just looking at the raw numbers, the Hornet reloads faster has one extra bomb, but the rockets are a little bit worse. But again, those rockets and bombs would work very well together. Uh, very good unison uh, coordination between the bombs and the rockets. So the Hornet's probably better on your ordnance, especially if you get that reload down even further, uh, and you get your reload down to less than 100 seconds. The Hornet really starts coming into its own if you're able to drop bombs and rockets every less than every two minutes. I mean, if you get distracted shooting another plane, by the time you get to another sector, your bomb's already loaded, and so it just it gives you a lot more versatility. But in the same way, in the same vein, the F7F is very similar to that. Um, you don't reload as fast, but your ordinance does more. Um, well, not necessarily, because you do have one less bomb, but your rockets are significantly better, and that's one thing that you definitely notice when you're playing the F7F. Those rockets really do feel quite good. So anyway, that's the ordinance. It's definitely probably on par with the Hornet. They're probably, and there's benefits and weaknesses of each, 
but the F7F and the Hornet have the best ordnance capability. So that's really good. Good news for the F7F. The next is survivability. And if we take a look, just looking at the raw numbers, it looks like the F7F has the best survivability only behind the, or second best, only behind the TU-1. So let's just take a look at that. Yep, DU-1 definitely has more hit points. Resistance to damage rating is the same. Resistance to fire is the same. Uh, yeah, okay. What about survivability on this plane? Hit points 500. Okay, so it's just slightly less, or slightly more. Uh, a little bit more resistant to damage by one. Okay, it's interesting. Uh, how about survivability over here? Yep. And then all the rest are pretty low. So, you know what? Yes, the TU-1 has the most hit points, but F7F is pretty durable. I mean, it is behind the TU-1, but outside of that, F7F is pretty durable. Uh, it's the most durable heavy fighter outside of that rating. Next is sur or airspeed. And if we take a look, my guess is it's pretty decent. Again, it's behind the TU-1. That thing's just overpowered, though. Uh, it's behind the Hornet. It's behind that plane. It's behind that plane. It's behind that plane. It's behind that plane. Uh, yeah. Granted, I do have a couple um, equipment modules that reduce my cruise speed and max speed with boost activated is also reduced. But here, let me make a quick point here. Your airspeed is lower than these aircraft. I mean, if I took that equipment off, it might bring it up to be comparable. But when you're doing heavy fighters uh, and you're setting up your equipment, think about those bonuses. You're not really any faster than any of the other heavy fighters. So going for a full speed build isn't going to do a whole lot for you. Uh, if you're going for a full speed build on your planes, you generally want to have um, the lead initially. You already want to have better airspeed than everything else. So that way when you focus on your airspeed, you're actually going to make yourself even more fast, even faster. It allows you to truly use your airspeed as a an escape mechanism. Um, if your airspeed is not really any better than the other planes, then it's an issue because you're not really getting the most out of your airspeed. So that's my opinion on it. If you're going for an airspeed build on a heavy fighter, you generally want to have the best airspeed in the class to begin with. Otherwise, uh, a more maneuverable build is generally pretty good because you still have really good airspeed generally, um, even with a full turn build, but it just allows you to get your guns on target a little bit easier. So we'll see that a little bit more when I start doing the equipment breakdown. So that's airspeed. The next one is going to be maneuverability, and I did a full maneuverability setup on mine, so do keep that in mind. Um, but if we take a look, we have better maneuverability than TU-1, better than Hornet, better than Key-93. Really? We're better than Key-93? That's actually a little bit surprising to me. Uh, VB-10, we're less than the VB-10, less than the XP-75 but more than the BF-109Z. So interestingly enough, again, we're back in the dead middle, and that was even with a full maneuverability layout. Interesting. So what does that tell you about the F7F? Well, it's not very good at anything. Um, it's not, well, in terms of airspeed and maneuverability, it doesn't usually have an advantage over your opponents. Um, I mean, if we take a direct comparison and look directly to the XP-75, the XP-75 has better airspeed and better maneuverability than us. 
And on top of that, the XP-75 also has more altitude performance than us. Uh, is that a pattern that we're going to notice? Well, if we take a look at the 109Z, 109Z has better airspeed, we do have better maneuverability, but it's fairly comparable, and the 109Z has better altitude. So again, we lose in two out of three categories against the 109Z. Uh, VB-10, Key-93, we have less airspeed than a Key-93, more maneuverability, but less altitude. Right? There's another pattern. If we look at the TU-1, we have less airspeed, more maneuverability, less altitude. Interesting, right? And, of course, the Hornet, less airspeed, more maneuverability, same altitude. But that's just very interesting. You don't really have any of those key advantages. Um, usually when I fly aircraft, I want to find what is... Out of those three stats, the airspeed, the maneuverability, and the altitude performance, out of th those three stats, what stat do I have an edge in? Or wh what is my best stat? And in this case, none. They're all fairly comparable to the rest of the aircraft. You don't really have an advantage at anything. So do keep that in mind as we continue through the review. Um, I know I just kind of went over altitude performance, but if we take a look at altitude performance quickly, we have less than TU-1, more than Hornet, less than Key-93, less than VB-10, or more than VB-10 by 1, uh, less than XP-75, and less than 109Z. So generally speaking, you have less altitude performance than the rest of the planes at your tier. To me, that seems a little bit strange. Um... If I was going to go back through this, I would give American aircraft higher altitude. We made aircraft to have high altitude. That was the whole... Um, when we built aircraft during World War II, I'm pretty sure most of the aircraft that we built were designed to be able to fly at high altitudes. That's how we could deal with... Um, it was like one of our main strengths when we went against other aircraft. So... If I was going to go back and rebalance the American line, the heavy fighter line, I definitely would give them more altitude performance, especially since the uh, Tier 5 Lightning and the Tier 6 Lightning have some of the best altitude performance at the tier, and then you go down to the X7, or F7F, which kind of drops that. Um, so we just did the comparison. So I'm going to get rid of everything, but I'm going to pull up the Lightnings real quick, just because I'm curious. When you go up to the F7F, what exactly are you gaining, and what are you losing? So we're going to pop this uh, P-38J and P-38F as well. Alright, so here's the F, here's the J. You do gain better guns, um, and you gain better ordnance. Uh, straight up, your ordnance rating and your gun rating go up significantly. And personally, when I was flying the F7F, those are the two main things that you do notice very quickly. Um, your ordnance and your guns just feel incredible for the tier. Your survivability significantly goes up, which is good. If you look at the F, or the F versus J, it only goes up by 1. But then you go to the F7F, and it basically goes up by 6. Significant step up in survivability. Airspeed, the exact same as the P-38J. You don't really gain any airspeed. But uh, to be fair, I do have equipment that's kind of hindering my airspeed. So it probably does go up a little bit. Um, but obviously not a ton. Um, and then also, we're taking a look at maneuverability. You're not increasing your maneuverability. Your altitude performance, though. Look at this. The altitude performance is the one key aspect that I, I just find absolutely ridiculous about the F7F. Why, why do we have the P-38 Lightning at Tier 5 and 6 that has significantly higher altitude performance than the F7F? Why? I don't understand that. Uh, so if I was going to go back through... The Pancake is the same thing. Like... 
the pancake in real life could get up really, 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 really high because those two propeller blades were so massive and had so much force behind them. It actually was designed, the whole reason they designed the pancake in the first place was to be able to, like, do vertical climbing. Uh, the way that it was designed allowed for it to basically do complete vertical climbing. Um, look at this. I mean, it, you go, you have the same altitude per performance at tier 8 that you did at tier 5. Um, but you lose, you're still having less altitude performance than the P-38J. And so that kind of leads me to this. Why does the American Heavy Fighter line do this? Why do we have such great altitude performance and then it just drops off? Uh, just because I've already started. There we go. So, the XF-90 and the Banshee, that's where you start getting all your altitude back. And uh, the XF-90 and Banshee also really, really do have quite decent altitude performance for their tier. But why are the Pancake and F7F struggling for altitude. I just, I genuinely don't understand that. And that's kind of the same thing with airspeed. Look at the airspeed stats between these. The F to J is a marginal increase, but it is an increase. The F7F might be a slight increase, but it's just not by much. The Pancake does get a little bit better airspeed. Um, but not a crazy amount not compared to the F2H and the XF90 which just have crazy airspeed for their tier um, so if it was up to me and I would go through and rebalance these I think the pancake and the F7F actually need to be rebalanced a little bit in order to make the line flow and have more consistent um, dynamics throughout the F7F and the Pancake both need to have an increase in airspeed and altitude performance uh, because I really do think it's lacking. Granted, you do have to realize that the uh, the Lightnings and the top tier American heavy fighters don't have as much ordnance capability as the F7F and the Pancake. Because they, the Pancake gets two tiny Tims or two 1,000 pound bombs. F7F, we've already gone through, it has a lot of ordnance capability. And you can definitely see that in the stats. The ordnance capability payload on those two aircraft are actually really high. And I don't know, I think the, the uh, rockets, the tiny Tims, actually raise your rating higher than the bombs on the, X, on the Pancake. I don't know why. Um, but I would never mount rockets on the or pancake unless I was going for a specific goal. Um, but yeah, I want to kind of mention that. So the main things we want to think about with the F7F is it's got incredible guns for the tier. Uh, the rating for the gun armament is uncomparable to anything else of the tier. And... That's something you will notice when you're flying this aircraft is the guns feel incredible. The bombs and rockets also just absolutely amazing. Um, in my opinion, it's probably a little bit worse than the Hornet overall in terms of ordnance, but it's still second best. And second best does not mean you're bad. Survivability is also one of the best of the tier. So those three stats, that's where this plane really shines. But your airspeed, not very good. Your maneuverability, it's okay. It's not anything to write home about. And your altitude performance is trash, generally. So, usually when people are flying aircraft, they rely on one of those three stats, the bottom three stats, the airspeed, maneuverability, and altitude performance to save them. But that's not where this aircraft shines. This, sh this plane shines more in the guns, rockets, and bombs and survivability. That's where it that's where it uh, shines. So, 
a lot of people struggle with figuring out, okay, I got this guy on my tail. How do I get him off my tail? I can't outturn him. I can't outclimb him. I can't outrun him. How do I get him off my tail? You can't. You really just can't in this aircraft. Um, that's one of the defining features about this aircraft is it, it struggles it struggles a lot to get planes off of its tail. What does that remind you of? Well, it should remind you a lot of the Thunderbolt line. Um, those characteristics are very common throughout multi-rolls, but especially the Thunderbolts. So, in my opinion, this plane really feels like a Thunderbolt on steroids. You have better guns than the Thunderbolt. You know what? Let's go and test this real quick. It does feel like a Thunderbolt, and I think... I'm, I know most of you guys don't like Thunderbolts. But if you give them a chance and you really play with them a bit, Thunderbolts are pretty fun. Uh, so yes, you get better guns, better ordnance, better survivability, better airspeed, worse maneuverability, but better altitude. Ta-da! We found where the F7F shines, right? It's a Thunderbolt on steroids. The only weakness is its maneuverability. Oof. That's bad, right? So, actually speaking, the F7F has worse maneuverability than a Thunderbolt. And you guys all know that Thunderbolts don't have very good maneuverability to begin with. But, do realize this is a heavy fighter. You're not really supposed to have that anyway. You're supposed to be more boom and zoomy, I guess. You're not really supposed to turn with fight with your opponents. But, Going through these stats has made me realize something. Maybe a turn build is not the way to go. Um, it may not be the way to go. So, there's the rundown of stats, but let's go and take a look at the equipment. What I have right now is a turn build. I don't know if you can really call it a turn build, though. We only have three equipment, right? Um, let's do the ones that are non-controversial at first. And the first of that is going to be this gun sight. If we open it up and take a look, we have firing accuracy or cruise resistance to injuries. I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. I've only explained this a hundred times. Um, I just prefer this gun sight. Uh, I don't really find cockpit armor useful in... 10 times out of 10 so yeah I almost always go with that uh, the forward firing gun weapon slot if we take a look at it I feel like you have quite a few options here uh, rate of fire that's what I went with because I just prefer having the rate of fire but the alternative to it would be the long, long gun uh, barrels and why well you do have half of your firepower, okay, not quite half, but half of your guns are 50 cals, right? And 50 cals have pretty poor range. Your 20s also have fairly decent range. Your 20s actually have very decent range. But going with long gun barrels might allow you to do things that you wouldn't expect to be able to do. So, l the range of fire, not a bad idea. Burst length, I would say, is probably the weakest on this plane, just because your burst length usually is not an issue anyway. Your 20s don't overheat very quickly, uh, and your 50 cals certainly don't overheat. So in my opinion, that's probably the one you don't want to do, but the other two, you can make an argument for, so it's really up to you. And the last one... Bombing accuracy, you're generally going to be bomb dropping bombs very, very close to ground. And when you do so, you almost never miss. Uh, when you're that close to the ground, you just hit. And there's nothing more you can say about it. Uh, I went with the strength and hard points to reduce the reload speed. And as you saw, it was worse still than the Hornet. Um, but I really prefer having that reduced uh, reload 
because it really allows me to be able to use my ordinance more effectively. If I have it up, I can take factories, which is something special you can do with this plane that a lot of other heavy fighters to this tier, you just can't do. And that's being able to take a factory, which is very interesting. Uh, you can't quite take it by yourself, but you sure as heck can do a lot of damage to it. Um, and if an enemy bomber or something, anything comes over it, that's all it takes. You just need one other thing to come over and you can flip a sector by yourself. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then you could do aerodynamic or range of rockets. You have, uh, nah. you have pretty good range on your rockets already. If we take a look at the Hornet, it was actually better range on the rockets than the Hornet as is. I just don't think that's very useful. On top of that, you reduce your rocket reload speed, which just... Oh, that sucks. I would not want to have my reload speed reduced. So, no, I don't think that's ideal. Uh, I think the range of rockets, the rocket site, the most beneficial uh, planes to put that on are planes with air-to-air -air rockets. Um, being able to get those rockets to have better range when you're firing can really catch your opponents off guard. Because you can, you can throw your rockets out so early that they don't even... They don't expect you to fire your rockets that early, so they don't even try pulling away at that point, so you just hit them, and uh, you can do some pretty crazy stuff with that. So that's where that equipment module is useful. Not so much on the Tiger Cat, because you're not going to be using them against air targets. You really want to use them against ground targets. And aerodynamic pylons, uh, a lot of HVAR really likes this equipment module. They really like um, not having such an impact on... Uh, the airspeed. So here's here's my thinking. I'll come back to that in a second. But for a specific build, the aerodynamic pylons can be useful. So let's go over to this last piece of equipment. The only piece of equipment that actually affects your maneuverability or airspeed or whatever you want it to. So in some ways, it's the most useful. Just don't do the engine protection armor for this one. There's better things to be using your slot for than that. Boost efficiency, not a bad choice if you're going for a speed build um, or engine thrust. If you're doing a speed build, I would probably go with the boost efficiency um, or the upgraded engine. It really depends on which you prefer. So either one of those would be good for a speed build. I went with the lightweight power unit but here's the two options. One, you go with a turn build, and if you do so, then reducing the reload on your bombs and rockets would make sense because you, you're you going to be trying to turn, you're trying to get those more precision hits, um, and it, it works. But do realize you're still less maneuverable than other heavy fighters. So, do you really want to do that? Well, it's up to you. If you do a speed build, then you would absolutely want to put aerodynamic pylons on because that will give you a little bit better airspeed. Um, if you're doing a speed speed build, go for a full speed build. Don't do uh, the hard points if you're doing a speed build because you really want that speed. But in my opinion, you have some of the best ordinance on the plane already. So in my opinion, the best use of this plane is to use that bombs, those bombs and rockets as frequently as possible. So that's why I went with the hard points. And because I went hard points, it forced me to do a turn build. That's the build I prefer. But there's absolutely an argument to be made on the other build. So that's that. We're going to take a look at the pilot. Um... One short or quick thing about pilots, I've kind of come to the realization recently that it's not very beneficial to have multiple pilots that are skilled. So instead, I just have one pilot. Um, and I use this pilot for all of my American planes. Uh, any of my American planes, whether it be a premium or non-premium, this is the pilot that I use. He's a 12 point pilot and eventually he's gonna have more. Um, but that way I'm always putting experience toward him to get him leveled up. And secondly, it only costs 100,000 silver or currency 
or credits to retrain him for the plane. For premiums, I don't have to do that. And also, it only takes like one battle to get him back to 100%. So you really only have to play one battle where he's not 100%. And voila, he's able to do stuff. So I really prefer that, having just one pilot. Uh, that's not always useful. Like the T1, you have a gunner as well. But training up a single gunner is not a bad idea either. Um, and that's kind of my philosophy I've been going with. So, pilot, pretty self-explanatory. We're going to do demo expert. Very, very important with this plane because uh, the ordinance is one of its defining features. Also, marksman 1 and 2 is excellent because it allows you to get your guns on target a little bit more. Uh, if you do a speed build, you're going to want to set it up a little bit differently. You're going to want to do engine guru 1, maybe 2, do cruise flight. But mine is a turn build, so I'm going to do these two, Aerodynamics Expert, Aero, uh, Badex Expert. And then I have an extra point, so I'm going to do uh, Eagle Eyed. Sure. Um, you probably would have done Firefighting instead, but it depends on the build you're going for with pilot skills. Are you doing Speed Build, or are you doing Not Speed Build? So anyway, that is the F7F in a nutshell. Paint job, it doesn't come with any beta skills paint or anything or any special paint. Um, Death Nail, he said he had earned a paint at some point, so you may have one lying around, but I do not, so this is just one that I paid for. It looks really nice on the F7F, but anyway, that's enough talking. I think you have a pretty good understanding of what this plane is and how it flies, so let's go see it in action with a crazy, crazy high score, and I'll tell you my full opinion after that. Okay. Hello everyone, welcome back. Here is the replay. There we go. No more Russian text. <laughs> okay. Anywho, we are flying on... Oh, what is this one called? I genuinely don't know. Okay, what part do I have to press? Uh, crap. Is it home? No, it's not home. It's a there we go. Okay. Sorry, I, remember, I couldn't remember which button I had to press. Okay. Anywho, we're flying on a map. This, I don't know what map this is called, but there's two factories off to our left, two command centers off to our right, and an airstrip right in the center. I am currently flying with Death Nail. We are top tier against two tier six planes. Not very fair for them, but that's how matchmaker works. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is just go and take the airstrip. Uh, if I actually cared about winning, I'd go after the factories, but I don't care because we're going to win regardless. Um, they are not in ground pounders. They are not in bombers. They are not up tiering us. So we are not going to have any issue. Uh, and even if they do somehow manage to flip the factories, whether it do be due to their bots or they shoot down our bots over the factory, it simply will not matter because I have the ordinance capability to go over there and deal with it myself. Um, this map is really nice because of those factories. Uh, if you're s if fighting against bots or something, you can really prevent either team from taking the factories uh, if you really want to for a significant amount of time to the point where the battle will last forever. And that is kind of our key strategy here, is to force the battle to last as long as possible so that I can farm as much as possible. Um, that's how you get high scores, uh, thinking not just about the narrow set about, okay, we need to take sectors, but which sectors to take, when to take them, and when to let the enemy take sectors so that you don't get supremacy. It's all part of an of the larger game uh, and it's it's really sets those apart from those who just want to win and those who just want high scores and I'm one of those like high scores uh, type of things um, but yeah I really like seeing those high scores we ram an ally but um, that was kind of his fault kind of my fault I don't really care we're, gonna, we're still gonna win uh, and I didn't really lose that much hit points so Technically, I wouldn't have to go and take this, but it does appear as though they're about to take the factory, 
and I do want to do some sort of damage. Uh, yeah. The longer the fact, oh, oh, the just got reset. That's good. Uh, we're gonna shoot our rockets, which is something I'm. Another reason why I like this replay is because I do actually use the ordinance, so you can actually see where it's useful. The best way to use this ordinance is generally to either soften up a very big target, such as the uh, center of the command center, center of the missile base, center of the uh, mine. All those are great targets to soften up with your rockets, and your rockets are significantly better than the Hornets, remember. You have the best air-to-ground rockets on a heavy fighter at the tier. Uh, using that to your advantage is very advantageous. So anywho, uh, we're going to come up and shoot the bomber flight for a little bit because they're right there and I don't see any targets really close to me outside of them. So let's just uh, shoot them and do notice the guns don't overheat very quickly. Even though they're 20s, I'm not having much of an issue at all with them overheating. Uh, they just don't overheat quickly and uh, oh, the guns just feel so good on this plane. Uh, and the ordinance feels so good as well. Uh, and you can take a hit from the tail gunners. It doesn't matter as much because you have a lot of extra hit points for the tier. The downside is you don't have very good altitude performance, but you can kind of make it work. You don't have the best airspeed, but it's not tragic. And you don't have super great maneuverability, but if you go with a turn build, you have better maneuverability than you would have otherwise. So... Uh, it, this is a very special type of plane. Uh, it takes a lot of skill, I would say, because you have to know, you have to choose your fights. Uh, if you can get those guns to fire and get the guns on target, you're going to be doing a lot of damage. A lot of damage. But, you can't really escape from uh, humans if they want you dead. If there's a bot on your tail, if there's a human on your tail, you don't really have any defining feature that will allow you to escape from those situations. Which makes this plane very interesting. Okay, I don't know if he just shot him down or rocketed him. I don't know, but that's kind of funny. Um, but this plane is very mm, temperamental, I would say. Uh, in top tier matches, it's very fun. In bottom tier matches, you're lack of any real advantage becomes even more apparent and it can be truly tricky uh, to say the least. Uh, it does look like the enemy does have one factory at this point but one of the factories is still neutral and they don't have any other sectors uh, so it should still allow this to be a fairly even game for a while having three factories to one factory it's still gonna be a fairly even in terms of points so that's good. Um, and yeah, I am not going to worry about going to take a factory at all anymore from the rest of the battle because I'm pretty sure that one that's neutral will remain to be neutral almost the entirety of the battle. And having letting the enemies have the other factory, I could care less. I'm not too worried about it. Um, the specialized are kind of ignoring me, kind of not, but it doesn't really matter because we can just shoot them down. And, yeah, this, this plane, I like it. I really like it. Uh, you have to be very careful because it doesn't have any strengths uh, that to get away from targets. But if you choose your fights carefully uh, and use this in um, very specific ways, you can really get it to be used a lot more. I, I, I see this plane as... A Thunderbolt done right, um, in the sense that when we compared it to the Thunderbolt of the same tier, you are better than the Thunderbolt in every way, every single way, except for maneuverability. And having that little bit of extra oomph makes the concept of a Thunderbolt work, because you're no longer terrible. Uh, almost all of those Thunderbolts could be good if they got a little bit of a buff, but they're so... Their stats are so poor, generally, that they just don't do much. You can't outturn anything, you can't outrun anything, your altitude performance is trash, your ordinance is good, but not 
to the point where you should be sacrificing everything. And the Thunderbolt, or the, th the Tiger Cat, it has that good ordinance. It has good survivability like the Thunderbolt. But it has just enough to make it work. Uh, just enough to not be terrible. Um, so yeah. This, this match has really not been hard. Uh, just going and finding single targets and shooting them with my guns and making them die. and It's all quite easy for the most part. Uh, I figured it would be, especially when I saw that all they had was specialized 109G and specialized uh, Spitfire. But they were both, or I think, it, yeah, was, oh, no, no, they are both tier 6. They did, okay, they did have a Corsair as well, but he didn't do much, so... That was just a good match, you know, just a nice relaxing match. And actually, we're going to get to see the ordinance again. Uh, the rockets won't be ready yet, but we can drop a bomb and get some extra points. Um, why am I going up? I should stay low so I don't get hit by AA guns. But we're, I'm going to die to AA guns because I am not low enough. So that was kind of a mistake, but there's not much left in the battle and... Having the 25,000 once we get that the 1,000 personal point bonus at the end of the battle. Um, I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, clearly, this plane is has potential. Uh, in order to get 25,000 personal points in a match, you really, really have to be doing something right. Uh, I just, I really like the F7F. Uh, it's very tricky, but once you get it, you just get it, and it feels so good. Um, but yeah, I got basically all the medals. Uh, let me go back to hangar, and I will see you back at hangar. All right, so we're back. Uh, here's my final um, verdict on the Tiger Cat. I think it's really fun. It's got a lot of things you have to be very careful about. And because it doesn't have airspeed maneuverability or altitude performance, you generally are dead if someone gets on your tail. But that's where, if you are very careful about the engagements that you uh, participate in, and very careful about where you go and how you use this plane, it has such incredible potential. Uh, but it also makes the plane one of the highest skill cap planes at the tier uh, among heavy fighters amongst tier sevens and potentially even the rest of the game it, it's very very particular about how you have to fly it but once you get it once you realize how to fly this aircraft nothing can compare to it it's it's so unique and in that way i really love the f7f um I can see, I can understand, especially how people don't like this aircraft, but for me personally, I love it. So, anyway, let's take a look at the end game result screen. We got 91,335 credits, 18,000, almost 500 experience, uh, almost 1,000 free experience, and a token. Woo, yay! Got a bunch of uh, medals, Hero of the Sky, because we checked on bomber flights, uh, and then we got 510 capture points, 21 air targets, and actually we only got 5 attack aircraft and bombers, but it was just enough to give us a hero of the sky, 25,345 personal points. We got shot down twice, 510 capture points again, uh, 15,000 damage to ground targets. That's very good. And we only uh, went, we dropped 2 bombs during this battle, and we shot 1 salvo of rockets. And 15,000 damage to ground targets. That's very, very good. Uh, almost 10,000 damage to aerial targets. That's exceptional as well. We had 21 air kills and we captured three sectors. Uh, truly a special, special battle. If I go to the last, last result screen, uh, yeah, not a whole lot, but it allows you to show or allows you to see what everyone else did. My final verdict: fun plane. Uh, and you could make it one of your favorites if you give it time uh, to learn it and uh, truly learn it. If, if you're willing to take the time to learn this aircraft and put up with its nuances, 
you've got something special on your hands. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I will try to record another video next Friday. Um, but until then, I hope to see you guys next time. And take care. I'll see you next time.